mga posibleng tanong na pwedeng lumabas ngayong darating na board exam ang alay ko sa inyo for today. 15 board exam type of questions that will cover your medical and surgical nursing along with rationalization. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create a nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals with their studies. If that's something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos two to three times in a week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because I will really happy to know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, nurses, let's jump into the video. Hi everybody! Alam ko talaga na nalalapit na ang board exam, kaya naman minamadali ko na ito. Pasensya na po kayong lahat kung hindi ako masyado nakakapag-upload lately. Medyo talaga namang busy, 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 busy lang po. Pero wag kayong magalala, I am back on track. Now, gusto kong malaman nyo na lahat, na parami na nga tayo ng parami dito sa ating team cool to. Maraming 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 salamat po. Binabasa ko po yung mga comments nyo. Sinasabi sabi nyo na yung mga questions na ginagawa ko o yung mga dati na cover kong questions sa mga board exam type of questions natin, yung sa PNLE natin, Nursing Test Banking, lahat karamihan doon ay lumabas ng board exam. Kaya naman super excited ako, Lord! Thank you po! Sana talaga ay nakatulong iyon sa inyo. Kaya naman, ngayong araw na ito, another board exam type of question ang alay ko sa iyo because for today, we are going to cover medical surgical nursing. Yes! Same thing, board exam type of questions with rationalization ang alay ko sa inyo for today. Kaya naman, in order for me to do that, I will need to switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi nurses, welcome back sa ating formal discussion ng yung medical surgical nursing, board exam questions, and rationalization. This is another topic or entry natin sa ating nursing test bank kung saan nag uh, gumagawa ako ng mga video materials, video lectures para sa inyo, mga sample questions na maaaring lumabas sa Philippine uh, Nursing License Examination, NCLEX, CBT, um, HAAD, DHA, yung mga kung ano-ano pa. Kasi alam nyo naman, alam nyo naman na kadami, karamihan sa mga tanong sa mga board exam na yan ay nauulit lang. Kaya naman, the more na napapa-familiar, excuse me, nap, napapa-familiarize ka sa mga ganong klaseng tanong and how to answer those questions, the more chances of winning. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test banks, uh, questions na ginawa ko, panoodin orin mo siya kasi I covered most of the topic in nursing, psychological nursing, uh, psychiatric nursing, maternal and child, community, med surge of course, um, foundation of nursing practice. Nako marami na po. Ililink ko yung mga playlist at kasama na yung ibang mga videos dito sa channel ko sa description box or kapag nagpapaw yung icon button baby, panoorin mo. Ah, click mo yan kasi ililink ko yung lima sa mga playlist natin na related sa nursing education. Now, handa ka na ba? Okay. I will provide to you the objectives. So, dalawa lang naman ang major objectives natin sa discussion natin for today. I will provide and discuss to you board exam type of questions. And then, I will also provide you rationalization per each board exam type of questions. Now, I want you to put your score on the comment section below. You don't have to be ashamed because, once again, the purpose of this rationalization and nursing test banking, kung bakit natin ito ginagawa, the intention is for you to understand the reason why we come up with that question. I mean, why we come up with that answer. Your score is not important for now. Um, I want you to focus on the rationalization because you will, you will, the, the, the more you understand why that is the answer, the more chances of you remembering once you encounter it on the actual examination day. Okay. Now let me provide to you the instructions. Well, you will be given 15 board exam type of questions. I will be reading the questions and the choices for you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to listen to my wonderful, gorgeous voice. Wow. Chatting. Now, you have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer, nurses. Good luck. Grab your water. Grab your paper. Because I'm going to just drink water here real quick. Mm. Oh, galaw, galaw, ha? Question number one. Let's begin. 
A patient is admitted to the medical surgical unit following surgery four days after surgery, the patient spikes a 38.9 degrees Celsius oral temperature and exhibits a wet productive cough. The nurse assesses the patient with understanding that an infection that is acquired during hospitalization is known as Girl, binigyan ka lang ng history, binigyan ka ng history nito ha. Pinaligoy-ligoy ka lang ng tanong pero ang pinakatanong mo lang talaga dito nurses ay um, the infection that is acquired during hospitalization is known as definition of terms. Binigyan ka lang ng tag dito ng ng scenario. Ano daw yun? Is it A, community acquired infection? B, an iatrogenic infection? C, a nosocomial infection? D, an opportunistic infection? Sasapukin kita your fire. Oh, nasan yung timer ko? <laughs> Punin ko lang yung timer ko, guys. I am so sorry. Oh. Pag ito naman ay hindi mo pa talaga nasagot, nanggigigil na mga bonus question na to, girl. Ha? Mayos ka, girl. Shakaling kita. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna give you five seconds, and that five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. The answer is sabay sabay letter C. Perfect. Nosocomial infection. Now, we define natin to nosocomial or hospital acquired are infections acquired during hospitalization for which the patient isn't being primarily treated. Community acquired for opportunistic infections may not be acquired during hospitalization. An iatrogenic infection is caused by the doctor or by medical therapy. And an opportunistic infection uh, affects a compromised host. All right, malino yon. Let's proceed. Board exam type of question number two. A client with anemia has a hemoglobin of 6.5 uh, grams per deciliter. The client is experiencing symptoms of cerebral tissue hypoxia. Which of the following nursing intervention would be the most important in providing care. Anong case mo dito? Anemic ang yung pasyente. Anong hemoglobin mo? 6.5 grams per deciliter. Nako, maisingit ko lang. Meron akong video discussion or laboratory, uh, ah, video discussion ko na inale ko para sa mga normal laboratory values. Part 1 and part 2 po iyon. Ha? Nako, maraming maraming salamat sa maganda yung pag-receive. Umabot ata nyo more than a thousand views. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ngayon, kung gusto mong balikan yun, balikan mo yun kasi related to sa uh, tanong na ito. So, most important in providing care sa patient mo daw na anemic. Okay, hemoglobin level mababa. Okay, is it A, providing rest periods throughout the day? B, instituting energy conservation techniques. C, assisting in ambulation to the bathroom. D. Check in temperature of water prior to bathing. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. Your answer is letter C. Perfect. Assisting in ambulation to the bathroom. Back it. Cerebral tissue hypoxia is commonly associated with dizziness. The greatest potential risk to the client with dizziness is injury, especially with changes in position or yung tinatawag nating orthostatic hypotension. Planning for periods of rest and conserving energy are important with someone with anemia because of his or her uh, fatigue level, but most importantly, is safety. Yes, tama po ito. Kapag makaka-encounter ka ng ganito mga tanong sa board exam, lahat sila tama actually, girl. Kasi ang, ang major role, or ang major role ng nurse, or ang nursing responsibility, or prioritization mo, or intervention mo sa pasyenteng anemic, is to conserve energy. Kasi nga, mababa ang hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin level nila, hindi ba? And hemoglobin is the component of the blood which actually carries what? Oxygen. So, mabilis sila mapagod, mabilis sila mahapo, yung mga ganyan. Pero between, between conserving energy and safety, which is assisting in ambulation, going to the bathroom, that is your highest priority. Safety. Okay? Malino yon. Okay. 
Now, board exam type of question number three. A client was involved in a motor vehicular accident in which the seat belt was not worn. The client is exhibiting crepitus, decreased breath sounds on the left, complaints of shortness of breath, SOB na, and has a respiratory rate of 34 breaths per minute. Ano yung 34 breaths per, uh, per minute mo? Ano sabi niyan? Takipnik ang yung pasyente. Bakit mo nasabing takipnik? Kasi ang normal uh, respiratory rate mo, ang RR mo, is 16 to 20. Which of the following assessment findings would concern the nurse most? Ano yung pinaka-concerning sa lahat ng mga assessment findings na to? So, ibig sabihin, lahat ito is this, uh, assessment finding mo sa mga pasyente nag-post-MBA, motor vehicular accident. So, ano na siya? Is it A, temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit and productive cuff? Is it B, ABG with partial pressure of oxygen uh, of 92 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 40 millimeters of mercury, trachea deviating to the right, or D, barrel chested appearance? Your five seconds starts now. All right, thumbs up, nurses. What is your answer? The answer to this question is letter C, tracheal deviation. Tracheal deviating to the right. A mediastinal shift is indicative of tension pneumothorax along with the other symptoms in the question. Since the individual was involved in a MVA assessment will be targeted at acute traumatic injuries to the lungs, heart, or chest wall rather than other con uh, conditions indicated in the other answers. Option A is common with pneumonia. Values in option B are not alarming. And option D is typically uh, is typical of someone with CO. PD. Alright, so uh, more into sa mga pre-hospital setting, mga EMS nurses natin, okay? Alright, board exam type of question number four. The proper way to open an envelope wrapped sterile package after removing the outer package or tape is to open the first position of the wrapper. Is it A, away from the body? B, to the left of the body? To the right of the body, letter C, or D, toward the body? Proper opening lang to ng package mo. Um, stereo package. So, paano mo siya ba daw bubuksan? Diba, simple mga tanong, tinatanong sa board exam, maniwala ka sa akin. So, your mga common sense type of questions, yung mga niinaaral natin sa, sa, um, read them natin, tinatanong siya. So, I'll give you five seconds and it starts right now. All right, time's up. The answer is letter A, away from the body bucket. When opening an envelope wrap sterile package, reaching across the package and using the first motion to open the top cover away from the body eliminates the need to later reach across the sterile field while opening the package. To remove equipment from the package, opening the first portion of the package toward to the left or to the right of the body would require reaching across a sterile field. So, we need to maintain the sterility of the sterile field. Kaya ang dapat mong uh, positioning sa pagbubukas ng packaging kapag nasa sterile area ka is away from the body. Malino yon, Malina. Okay. Board exam type of question number five. Assessment of the client with possible thrombophlebitis to the left leg and deep vein thrombosis. Naku, meron po akong discussion nito ng DVT natin ha. Inaral natin to under sa concept ng medical surgical nursing. I discuss everything about the concept, assessment, diagnostic findings, nursing interventions, and ano pa ba? Um, clinical definition ito ang thrombophlebitis natin. Okay. So, going back to the question, um, the client complains of extreme pain in the calf. This should be documented as, ano yon? Yung pain in the calf. Is it A, positive tourniquet test, B, positive Hamann sign, C, negative Hamann sign, or D, negative tourniquet test? Your five seconds starts now. All right, time's up. The answer is letter B, positive Hamann sign. Naalala pa tong ano, Hamann sign natin. Okay, naku, maling picture yung nilagay ko, girl. So, positive Hamann sign, pain in the calf while pulling up on the, the toes is abnormal and indicates a positive test. If the client feels nothing or just feels like the calf muscle is stretching, it is considered negative. A tourniquet test is used to measure for varicose veins. 
Ako, pasensya na po kayo. Mali, mali, mali ito. Mali, mali ating picture. Pero, ayan o. At least, magagamit mo siya as reviewer. Okay. For exam, top of question number six. Nako, malapit na tayo, nurses. Nakakarami na ba kayong tamang sagot? Okay. Eto na. Number six. Pawi tayo. Thomas Ellison is a 79-year-old man who is admitted with diagnosis of dementia. The doctor orders a series of laboratory tests to determine whether Mr. Ellison's dementia is treatable. The nurse understands that the most common cause of dementia in this population is 79 years old elderly. Ano daw most common cause ng dementia sa mga tulad ni Thomas Ellison na 79 years old? Okay? Is it A, AIDS? Is it B, Alzheimer's disease? Is it B, Uh, I mean, sorry, C, brain tumors, or D, vascular disease. Your five seconds starts now. Time sabi. Uh, what is your answer, nurses? So the answer to this question is letter B, Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia in the elderly population. AIDS, brain tumors, and vascular disease are all less common causes of progressive loss of mental function in elderly patients. Remember, guys, form of your Alzheimer's disease is dementia, right? Early, tama ba? Early form of Alzheimer's disease is dementia. So, uh, you just have to think na kapag ang tanong ay uh, about uh, Alzheimer's, most probably yung dementia nasa choices. Yung Alzheimer's yung nasa choices, yung dementia yung nasa tanong. So, link sila most probably. Hindi yun yung absolute truth, pero most probably kung Kung nakita mo yung um, yung concept ng Alzheimer's and dementia, sila yung magkatugma sa mga tanong, okay? Now, number seven, which of the following nursing interventions is contraindicated in the care of the client with acute osteomyelitis? Anong case mo dito? Acute osteomyelitis. Contraindicated daw sa mga pasyente may acute osteomyelitis. Is it A, apply heat compress to the affected area? B, immobilize the affected area? C, administer narcotic analgesics for pain? Or D, administer OTC analgesics for pain? Your five seconds starts now. All right, nurses. The answers to this question is letter A, apply heat compress to the affected area bucket. Options B, C, and D are appropriate nursing interventions when caring for the client diagnosed with osteomyelitis, meaning indicated sila. The application of heat can increase edema and pain in the affected area and spread bacteria through vasodilation. Hence, it is contraindicated. Malino yon, board exam type of question number eight. A client with congestive heart failure has digoxin, brand name lanoxin. Ordered every day prior to giving the medication, the nurse checks the digoxin level, which is therapeutic and auscultates an apical pulse. The apical pulse is 63 beats per minute for one full minute. The nurse should, ano daw gagawin mo kapag ang apical pulse ng pasyente mo is 63 beats per minute. E considering na ang pasyente mo is nakadigoxin. Anong gagawin mo? Una, is it A, are you gonna hold the lanoxin? Or B, are you gonna give the half dose now, wait an hour, and give the other half? Is it C, call the physician? Or D, give the lanoxin as ordered? Your five seconds starts now. Perfect. All right, time's up. The answer is letter D. Give the lanoxin as ordered. Bakit? The lanoxin should be held for pause of 60 beats per minute. Nurses cannot arbitrarily give half of the dose without a physician's order. Unless specific parameters are given concerning pulse rate, most resources identify 60 as the reference pulse. Alright? Sana po nakatulong ito mga pictures na to, ha? Uh, I'm really trying to be visual here and to incorporate some of the visuals that you can find online para naman makatulong sa ating mga visual learners. Alright, board exam type of questions number 9. Nurse Marian is caring for a client with hiatal hernia. Ang case mo dito, hiatal hernia. Which of the following should be included in her teaching plan regarding causes? Causes down ng hiatal hernia mo. Is it A, to avoid heavy lifting? Is it B, dietary plan based on soft foods? C, its prevalence in young adults? Or D, its prevalence in fair-skinned individuals? Your five seconds starts now.
Time's up. The answer is letter A. To avoid heavy lifting. Why? Heavy lifting is one factor that leads to development of hiatal hernia. Hiatal hernia, dietary factors involve limiting fat intake, not restricting clients to soft foods. It is more prevalent in individuals who are middle age or older. Fair skinned individuals are not prone to this condition. So, hindi totoo ito. So, ang tama dito is avoid heavy lifting. All right. Board exam type of question number 10. Joseph has been diagnosed with hepatic encephalopathy. The nurse observes flapping tremors. The nurse understands that flapping tremors associated with hepatic encephalopathy are also known as definition of terms nurses. Flapping tremors sa mga patient with hepatic encephalopathy. Anong tawag doon? Is it A, aphasia? Is it B, ascites? Is it C, astasia? Or D, asterixis? Madali ito. Bonus question, ha? Your five seconds starts now. Perfect. Anong sagot? Sabay-sabay, letter D, asterixis. Flapping tremors associated with hepatic encephalopathy are called asterixis. Aphasia is the inability to speak. Ascites is a, as what? The accu accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Astasia is the inability to stand or sit still. Yung po yun, okay? Now, last five questions na. Hyperkalemia can be treated with administration of 50% dextrose and insulin. The 50% dextrose. Tinatanong ka, ano yung 50% dextrose na yun? Okay, sa treatment ng hyperkalemia. Anong cost nun? Ano ang ginagawa niya? When you give patient 50% uh, dextrose, uh, sa mga patients suffering from hyperkalemia. Is it A, it causes potassium to be excreted? B, causes potassium to move into the cell? Is it C, causes potassium to move into the serum? Or D, it causes un, uh, counteracts and uh, counteracts the effects of insulin? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up. The answer is letter D, counteracts the effects of insulin. Ito explanation ha. The 50% dextrose is given to counteract the effects of insulin. Insulin drives the potassium into the cell, thereby lowering the serum potassium levels. The dextrose doesn't directly cause potassium excretion or any movement of potassium. Hence, the answer to this question is letter D. Last four questions na tayo, nurses. Galaw, galaw. Okay. Which of the following findings would strongly indicate the possibility of cirrhosis? When you talk about cirrhosis, anong organ of the body ang naiisip mo? Ano yon? A liver. Perfect. Alright, is it A, dry skin? Is it B, hepatomegaly? Is it C, peripheral edema? Is it D, pruritus? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. What is your answer? Mm, sinabi ko na to, hepatomegaly liver. Although option D is the correct one, it is not a strong indicator of cirrhosis. Proritus can occur for many reasons. Options A and C are incorrect. Fluid accumulations is usually in the form of ascites in the abdomen. Hepatomegaly is an enlarged liver, which is correct. The spleen may also be enlarged. All right, malino yan. Let's proceed. Board exam type of question number 13. Aling Puring has just been diagnosed with closed angle, narrow angle glaucoma. Anong uh, case mo dito? Glaucoma. The nurse assesses the client for which of the following common presenting symptoms of the disorder. Presenting symptoms na mga pasyenteng mong may glaucoma, huwag malilito sa tanong ha, pero inaraw down ng natin to. Makakatulong na kapag nagsasagot ka ng mga board exam type of questions sa mga ganito or sa actual exam, you mark the keywords or the, yeah, the keywords as you read the question kasi it will actually lead you in finding out the correct answer. So, ano ang presenting symptoms na mga pasyente mong may glaucoma? Is it A, halo vision? Is it B, dull eye pain? Is it C, severe eye and face pain? Or D, nakalimutan ko lagi ng letter D dito, typographical, impaired night vision. Your five seconds starts now. All right, all right. The answer to this question is letter C. Severe eye and face pain. Narrow angle glaucoma develops abruptly and manifests 
with acute phase and eye pain and it's medial emergency. Halo vision, dull eye pain, and impaired night vision are symptoms associated with open angle glaucoma. Remember, dalawang ating type of glaucoma, di ba? Open and narrow angle or yung close angle natin. Pag close angle, severe eye and face pain. All right, last two questions. Make it counters this. Board exam type of question number 14. Madali ito. Chovstek sign is associated with which electrolyte imbalance? Nako, mali pa spelling ko ng imbalance. Impal imbalance. <laughs> so, basta na-gets mo na yan. Ano daw tong Chovstek sign na to? Anong electrolyte imbalance ito? Nako, ang gigigilok sa inyo. Is it a hypokalemia? Ano pa nangyayari sa akin? Bakit mali-mali spelling ko? Hypokalemia ay calcemia yan ha? Calcium, hypokalcemia. Is it B, hypokalemia? Is it B, hyponatremia? Or D, hypophosphatemia? Or temia? Your five seconds starts now. All right, your time's up, nurses. The answer is hypocalcemia. Chopstick sign is a spasm of the facial muscles elicited by tapping the facial nerve and is associated with hypocalcemia. Clinical signs of hypokalemia, or yung kalimia, hawag malilito ka, uh, 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 potassium, um, are muscle weakness like cramps, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. Muscle cramps, anorexia, nausea, and vomiting are clinical signs or of hyponatremia. Clinical manifestations associated with hypophosphatemia include muscle pain, confusion, seizures, and coma. The answer to this question is letter A, hypocalcemia. All right, last questions. Make it counter. says, what laboratory test is a common measure of renal function? When you talk about renal function, ano yung kadalasang order ng doktor? Para ma-measure natin ang kidney function mo, renal function. Is it A, C, B, C? Sapukin kita. Is it B, bun, bun, and crea? Creatinine yan. Or C, glucose. D, alanine amino transferase or ALT. Your five seconds starts now. Hala. All right. The answer to this question is letter. Sino nakako? Sino nakatama dito? Letter A. B U N and Crea. The B U N is a primary is primary uh, primarily used. Excuse me, as indicator of kidney function because most renal diseases interfere with its excretion and blood and cause blood vessels to rise. Creatinine is produced in relatively constant amounts according to the amount of muscle mass and is excreted entirely by the kidneys, making it as a good indicator of renal function. All right, tapos na nga tayo sa ating 15 board exam top questions that covers your medical surgical nursing. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do in my channel. Comment it down below. Abangan nyo po yung mga next nating uh, video discussions related sa nursing. I-upload ko po sila this week. Pasensya na ako, medyo natagalan, natagalan ako sa pag-upload. Medyo nabisi lang. Pero nevertheless, I am back on track. Pakilagay po mga scores sa baba. Opo, wag po mahihiya. There is no shame. I would really, really love to evaluate all of your scores. And again, if there's something that you want to take out from this video discussion, it is the rationalization of each um, and uh, questions. Okay? Now, tulungan mo na nga ako, ipamalita mo na Sa Radyo Sira, ang pinakabago at ang pinakafresh at pinakalibreng nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much nurses for watching. Hope you learned something. Help me grow my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Kulto. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box or simply click the second button right here. Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave, except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. Also, please, please follow and subscribe to my Facebook page because I'm the last ako nagpo-post doon. Okay? See you guys there. Pasensya na kayo sa background ko ha, kasi ano eh? Alam mo yon, may jo busy busy pa hindi pa tayo na kakaano talaga ng nirat chako lang to. Maraming tayo para bang maraming maraming salamat mo good luck good luck po sa mga stickers natin ngayong darating na board exam. Sana magkukumit ako sa inyo kung hindi naging dizzy, magkukumit ako sa inyo. Everyday mag-upload ako ng board exam type of questions. Okay, baby?